relevant, so I guess that's the comparison that they, that they want to make. Now, my problem with this is that this is not being given to them yet. And why are they marketing it like it's a done deal? That's rubbed a lot of citizens wrong for a long time. And why are our county commissioners on there endorsing it when they hadn't given it to them? <coughs> I take your attention back to this right here. It's because they help them plan it. Now this is wrong. I don't care who looks at it. This is wrong. Now, I want to open the meeting up for discussion. At first, I want the uh, lady back in the back, Tori, Tori, is it Tori? Yes. Uh, to tell us what you were saying. Well, I, I like that I used to, I know the state of Texas and the state of North Carolina is different. I was formerly um, court administrator for the commissioner's court in Scurry County. And we had a lot of issues come up with leasing buildings. We leased the county hospital to an outside agency. And that did cause ruckus. But my feeling is there's a lot of commingling of county agents and individuals. There's a lot of commingling of uh, nonprofit dollars, business dollars, and county dollars. And I just think the line needs to be drawn somewhere. And if the county is, I mean, if the state attorney needs to come and review some of this, I'll call them and just have them look over the paperwork and see if there's been illegal forums or forums together of commissioners. Okay. Does anybody have anything they want to say to that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear it. Well, I was just wanting a clarification on something you said about uh, a meeting today and that the, the, the you knew all those people couldn't be there. Was there? No, no, no. Yeah. No. A, a meeting, no. But they're not going to be there. That everybody could come tonight. It was just, they were just an invite. Well, I thought you could, meant they, they, they no, weren't no. allowed to meet with, with no, so many no, people at a time or something. They just couldn't come tonight. Was all. It, it was just a, only two of the commissioners were able to come. Okay, did anybody uh, else have anything to say to that? Okay. Particularly to that. Uh, no, no, no. If you've got something else to say, go ahead. This is something to talk about. Well, you can see how much you want to. Okay. Um, I am for the destination we will have. Uh, I have seen a lot of good things that they have planned, uh -huh. and I saw what happened to all the artifacts in the courthouse over the years. I was mm -hmm. there the last several times I went in there. I couldn't believe that they had been allowed to deteriorate as much as they had. So somebody had just dropped the ball. They had let everything deteriorate to the point that you know nobody wanted to do anything. And then Destination Cleveland County comes along with a vision and suddenly you have all these people jump on the bandwagon. Oh no, they can't do that, they can't do that. But why not give Destination Cleveland County a chance to do something, especially with our music heritage because we have a rich music heritage in Cleveland County. We have Earl Scruggs, who is national, the world known. Don Gibson, who is known all over the world. We have a lot of other people. There's Snuffy Jenkins. There is Rick Bowles, who has written a number of songs with various artists. I mean, and then we have artists in the county. Nancy Carter, uh, Evan Still, you know, all these people. Uh, Destination Cleveland County seemed to be on the ball for getting something done to show more heritage than just the uh, dynasty and you know things like I know that the courthouse at one time had um, an exhibit on the hospitals they had one on textiles and you you know we all have to realize that textiles are gone in Cleveland County. I mean you know it is dead in Cleveland County, but the heritage is still there. And then we had the Civil War heritage. I mean we've got a lot of heritage in Cleveland County that we need to keep up. But we also have this rich music heritage that this seemed to be one of the things that would bring tourists into Cleveland County. Whereas just our Cleveland County artifacts 
would not bring in the tourists that the music would. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Betty. Well, that sounds just like the plan you told us about that Jim Allen had proposed. That's right. It is. And had that been, you know, acted on or whatever, yeah. we would have already, that would have already been part of the museum. But this plan is not as inclusive. This plan is really not as inclusive because if you remember I told you the space that's there. I'm just going to say, why? Why can't we keep the courthouse as a museum and put Earl Scruggs in another building? He's asking why can't we keep the courthouse and put him in another building? I think. <laughs> Most of the people of Cleveland County would like to see. That's what it is. I don't think there's anyone opposed to there being an Earl's Book Center. No. It's the location. Right. Now, is this, is this where they want to bring all this? If you're just raising hands, that's what it is. It's what you like and what you think. Well, that's what that's what we've got here tonight, and that's what I'm hearing too, and that's what I've been hearing. That the people that, of the county are just <coughs> sad that this will not be the courthouse and that it will be a private corporation that will have this and it will be called known as the Stroke Center which really sort of makes it seem like the same thing and I think I said this at last meeting it would be like it's the Capitol building being called uh, John Philip Sousa Center just because he lives in Washington DC. Is that how you feel? Is that yeah. I'm yeah. on the right track with it? Okay. What this will be is the if it, it, it's going to be called the Scrub Center, what this will actually be, it will be a business contract between a nonprofit group and one family who happens to be, you know, a Cleveland County native. But I, I just don't feel like the main the main building of our heritage in our county should be a business deal with one family. Right. I, 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 I got a question. I'm not too up to date on the politics of this whole issue. But from what I've heard here just on the T V and newspapers and so forth, you know, it's all a controversy over the subject of putting a rural scrub on our courthouse. Myself, I've been around here sixty one years. I've done a lot of picking in music, playing guitar and everything. I have never seen Don Gibson or Earl Scruggs ever donate one red penny to Cleveland County. Well, why should we make, Why should we make a memorial to them in our courthouse? Why can't they do like he's talking about? Put them in a building by themselves. Don is buried here. Pardon me. Don is buried. I know that. And, and that brings us forward. I think that brings us forward. I've never met. I've been playing around here all my life. Then whatever exhibits that we have that are that are Earl Scruggs things. I understand that he's not leaving his things to here or he won't be buried here, but what are facts that we have of his or, or his relics that uh, that they will be on the phone that maybe he's leaving to the country music hall thing and that his exhibit would be on the phone here and I'm thinking that that would cost some dollars for an insurance policy and also some security which would give something to think about. Okay, go ahead, Brendan, do you know how much they're paying Earl Scruggs for the use of his name? I understand that he is giving us the use of his name. Now, to me, a gift is a gift. And if you have some say so, like who performs there, what is uh, exhibited there, or if you have some um, money that you get from this, you know, you're compensated in some way, like from that gift shop. I understand the souvenirs, the CDs will be bought from him. Then it becomes more of a lease or a license. Well, I'm, I'm not against an Earl Scruggs Center, but I don't think the courthouse is the correct venue for this. Yeah. It needs to be in a separate building. Uh, it's, a, it's a private commercial enterprise, whether uh, DCC is a nonprofit organization or not. The whole term here is to make money. My concern is we talk about taxes, paying it from uh, hotel motel tax. We only have two decent motels in town and they're full about 80% of the time. So the most we're gonna get is 20% of 
The other concerning factor is parking in downtown. You come downtown some nights, even with the restaurants that are there, and there's no parking spaces. And I don't know how you're going to put these people up and feed them other than at McDonald's and Burger King on their way passing through town. Because you've got to have some place for them to stay. The family comes over here, they're interested, they're going to want to stay, at least spend the day. I mean, we hope they stay for a week because the idea is to lift all their money out of their wallet while they're here. That's right. But we have to have places for them to stay, places for them to eat, and other venues of entertainment while they're here, whether it's the city park or wherever it happens to be. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't think any of that's being addressed. Well, it isn't. And, and this is one of the things that happened with this uh, Randy Parton Theater down in Roanoke Rapids, and some of you might be familiar with that and what happened there. Um, this, this is tax <coughs> increment financing, which I think I mentioned it last. Uh, <coughs> is that the commissioners and the officials now can borrow money on the, uh, the, the taxpayers' property taxes without uh, having a referendum where um, the citizens can vote whether to do it or not. So they did this down in Roanoke Rapids and they raised, uh, they borrowed $21.5 million for this theater. And they got Randy Parton, Dolly Parton's brother, to uh, come there and do that. But off the side, Randy Parton was going to Las Vegas and doing a lot of this other stuff with some of the money that came in. But the, the, one of the problems that they had, Oliver, is that they did not have the hotels and the restaurants and the businesses right. up and running before they did this. So they didn't get the host city uh, venue packed at night and didn't bring in the money that they hoped that they would bring in. And so now this is the predicament that they're in, notwithstanding that they got rid of, of uh, Randy Parton by paying him off $750,000. This is what they're in. They're not bringing enough money in from this to pay back that big loan to the taxpayers. Uh, well, we're faced with the same problem here. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have the, the establishments to support what they want. I think, I think their concept yeah. is great. But I think we're putting the cart before the horse and other things have I think to be done. Right. And I think it needs to be in a separate facility, attract them to the, the Don Gibson Theater, attract them to the Earl Scruggs facility, attract them to the courthouse. I think you're right. And those are all Everybody like that. Things. And, and let me tell you another thing, too, that happened with this, Don, uh, this Earl um, Red Park Theater before we get off of that. They had the same thing that we got here. Um, a reporter from Carolina Journal said it best. He said, the Randy Parton Theater, the individuals, the agencies, and the organizations were so intertwined that the, the people that pushed for the Randy Parton Theater, that it became a potential minefield of conflicts of interest. And I think that that's what we show it here on this page, that it's that it disturbing that you've got so many conflicts of interest here. And somebody else knows the world. Well, just one other thing, then I'll shut up. No, I mean, I really would like to see a survey made outside of Cleveland County of how many people really know who Earl Scruggs is. I would like that, too. Because I would like that, too. I don't too. think when you get outside of the forest that he's that well known except in his own specialized bluegrass field. But when you get out into the general populace, nobody knows. Now I'll also tell you, I go through Meridian, Mississippi a lot. Meridian, Mississippi has a Jimmy Rogers Museum. I'm a strong fan of Jimmy Rogers, but have I ever stopped? No, because I'm going somewhere. Who's Jimmy Rogers? <laughs> there you are. There you are. Well, I can answer a few of these questions. When they had the Earl's Club concert, it was people, it was really noted and people from 10 states came and so so i think that there's a lot of misinformation and being said i'm hearing a lot of things about the research there's been a tremendous amount of research about where to stay and, and what will happen and i, I believe that um it, it disturbs me that there's a lot of this so where do you stay they, they've had marketing from and research well it where will bring stay? hotels Huh? It will bring hotels. If there's if there's a need, they will come. But first, you have to have a drop. My question is, but you have to have a place for 
to stay before they can come. Well, there's the American Inn of Boiling Springs that places in Gaffney when you do the American But we don't get any tax dollars out of Boiling Springs or out of Gaffney or Gaffney. If there's a need, there will be people that will build here. I, I really do think that this is, it, this is sabotage that it's going to be a trap. I don't think it's a trap. I don't think that's a bad word. I think that's a bad word. We're not looking to trap. I think that's a trap. It's a bad word. And, and this group, I know that this, I forgot to say this group now that I see in uh, that I, I know they've been referred to as Debbie Downer. Uh, I know that the newspaper has, uh, has kept saying where this group doesn't have a voice. Just because you don't agree with something and you think it's convoluted logic, and that based on payment surveys, I don't that think that that means that you're uh, that you're not right and, uh, and having your say so. And I don't think this group is looking to sabotage because this is something that has not been accepted yet. So it would have to have been accepted and and before it could be sabotaged. Well, that that this project is about having being having the right information. And, uh, putting out the right information. Well, maybe if maybe if DCC uh, and everybody else had put out all the information up front, maybe we would have had the right information, which we haven't had. I think you're right. Jim, the, the commissioners that were here last time, Hutchins and Hallbrook, had mentioned having a meeting that we could get together and ask questions. Have has anything come with that? Uh, what do you say? Not but the question was, the last time we knew we said we would try to get answers to your question. Uh -huh. On the next council meeting, the commissioner did schedule on the agenda, which went on the first of the week, to address the questions that I got from the last meeting. Mary's going to pass out cards tonight. Anyone's got questions, and we're going to address these questions in the next meeting, but it's going to be a orderly fashion. So if you got a let me see, if you got additional questions, you need to be there prior to and sign up for your three minutes. But we will address these questions that we've got from you at the next county commissioner meeting. Kenny and I said we would take it back to the group and make a proposal, and that's what it is. So as of Monday, I called and it was put on the agenda for the 18th. Um, yes. Thank you, Mary. I, I thought you were talking more like we didn't talk about it was going to be at a regular. I mean, it was going to be at a regular commissioners meeting, but at the end of the meeting, not your three minutes and that kind of stuff, where we could actually talk about it. I, I did not say that we would have a question answer, but I, I could not speak for the whole group. I think what well, I did say is we would have a at one of the February meetings yeah, that maybe we did. I think it was in the second week, you know, something in that time frame. So it just so happened that the, uh, it's, on the next, it's on the next agenda. I have a question. Just before I came up here tonight, I read on the Star's blog that. Somebody called Captain Ron, I believe, was the person who posted it, who said that this, that you all, and it said Mary Amber, who it said, but she went to that one, had, was going to try to split this as an emergency on um, the next meeting when, where the public wouldn't be there to try to vote this in. It is on today's star blog, uh -huh. somebody who posted this is called Captain Ron. But he said that, 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 that Mary Asper um, had said that she was going to be, he said, did anybody read that? Oh, no, I read it. That um, Mary Asper was going to have this, not on the agenda, but have this where it would be an emergency vote and try to vote this in Monday, Tuesday night without the public being aware of it. You want me to answer that? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mary Acker said. This is Mary Acker. This is our county commissioner. And, and, Mary uh, Acker, county commissioner. Mary John Hutchins, our county Mary Acker said absolutely nothing. And that blog, like that lady was saying, I don't, I don't even read them because my faith won't allow me to. Because sometimes people say things that they want other people to, to, to cause conflict. And since I'm not a conflict person, I believe in talking reasonable. I believe in saying what is right. I will never go against what I took my oath. 
and you can count on that. When I raised my hand to God, that meant everything. So well, I don't, I don't do. Uh, but I'll Mary, do you life. wouldn't do that to us, would you? I hope you wouldn't. And I want to say something else too. Um, while I'm standing here, I haven't said anything, and I know that Commissioner Hutchins and Commissioner Hulbert had a chance to, to speak. Um, there's a lot of things that's been said, and I really do not. Let me ha let me address the part about why my name is on the sheet. I served this county as chair chairwoman of the county commission. If you ask me to come to a meeting and be a part of something or listen to something, I'm going. That's what I'm supposed to do. Just like I'm here tonight. I wasn't here last time because the employees were having a banquet and I thought that was important since we were the ones that was doing it. So, but I, I was making sure that I was going to come tonight. But that's the reason why the testimonial we always make testimonials. There's nothing different about that. When new companies come into this county, the county commissioner chair is the first one they'll call and say what you think about it. I'll tell you why Destination Cleveland County has been using this, the language that they've used. The county commissioner unanimously gave them support for their project. Unanimously. They gave them their support. The only thing that's withstanding now is the lease. And at some point, that will come to our attention and we'll have to make a decision. Now the one thing that I do say about this whole thing is that, Brenda, I appreciate your getting citizens together. Because you know when, what's your first name? Brian. Brian. You know that when you and Brian showed up at my office, and we spent an hour and a half talking about this process last June. Last June. And not only did we spend time talking about this project, because a little something that makes that, that concerns me is that on the radio I heard somebody say, what has Earl Scruggs ever done for Cleveland County? I went home and I listened to it, and I stayed up about 11.30 listening to house uh, radio stuff. And I made some little notes because I wanted to make sure that I was doing what was right. Now, whoever said that about three commissioners being at a meeting, we were not conducting business. We go to Cliffside all the time. We went to Cliffside, put on our green badges, and we stood before Cliffside, and we got the Cliffside steam station. We're not conducting business. We're in support of initiatives coming through this county. And unless we take a vote, then we're not in a meeting. We're not taking, we're not conducting business. As a matter of fact, that first meeting was just, that they called and said, we're getting ready to plan something. Can you stop by and, and, and just listen to it? It was a listening meeting. It wasn't talking. I don't think I said a word. I know I did. So that, that, that is not, that is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be at the beck and call of, if you want me tomorrow where you are, I took a vow that I would be there if I could. And I will. That's just who I am. Now, um, the other thing is when I want to talk, address uh, Brendan and uh, Brian. Because in my office, this thing of what has uh, Earl Scruggs done for us? Well, you know, Brendan, when you first came to me, you were talking to me about a project concerning Earl Scruggs. That's no. right. That's I, right. Didn't, I didn't pose that question. No, I, I understand no. that, but I want these people to know when she first came yeah. to me, she was talking to me about a project for <coughs> Earl Scruggs. Now, you make sure that you understand that because I, it was a little bit concerning to me when I heard that what has he done because if he can do something for one person, he can do something for somebody else. So I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna take any I mean, you know, yes my name was on is, is on that sheet all over it. But that's because I was in leadership and I still am. But when that happened, I was the chairman of the county commissions. So I was supposed to be there. Now, I mean, you know, I, I, I'll be glad to ask I mean I, I listen I mean I listen and this is a you know and and I know I don't want to get into my faith, but I've got to. I'm not ashamed of God. And he said, the Bible says, my people perish because of vision. Without a vision, the people perish. 
I believe it is a vision. I don't know where it's going to go, but I believe that it is something good. They are on to something good. And I do believe that there will be some good stuff coming out of this. But I also believe that we all, all have to give this a chance. Now my suggestion, after I found, uh, listened to what went on the last time, my suggestion was to the commissioners, right Johnny? I went to Johnny and I said, Johnny, what do you think about this? Because we can't do three people. I go to Johnny and I said, Johnny, what do you think about this? Because I listened to it. And I appreciate what Johnny said last, last time. But what I said is there's a sign that's got to go on the yard. If the sign goes on the yard that says Earl Scruggs Center, sure, Center, when I first heard that word Center, I thought, yeah, that may be, you know, the name may be, you know. But then I thought, well, there's another sign. And, and then the, the zoning code on the signs, if you see how small the signs have got to be, that won't even be an issue. It's not like you're going to see something like this that says Feral Scruggs Center. Because the zoning codes will only allow you so much of a sign. But you can, I think you can be allowed so many signs. So I thought, why not, if there's a sign that says Feral Scruggs Center, and it does happen to be inside the courthouse, then why not have one that also says the Cleveland County Courthouse and member, I mean, have them uh, list those patriots in our county who made a difference so that one man's name won't be on the ground. Then you've got Omax Gardner, you've got all these other people who've made these significant differences in Cleveland County. That, that, that's all. But I, I, didn't, I, wanted to, I wanted to really clear that up about why Destination Cleveland County is using this and using that like they went out on their own and did it. They didn't go out on their own. No, they did not go out on their own. Cleveland mm -hmm. County Board of Commissioners, when they came to, we have had, we have probably had four meetings where Destination Cleveland County was a part of the meeting. We meet every first and third Tuesday, and there's nothing surprising about that. We communicate openly every first and third Tuesday about everything that comes before us. Destination Cleveland County brought the proposal to the boardroom. We heard it. It was open for public review. The agenda was there, and they answered questions. The same type of questions that we're, we're continuing to say that nobody will listen to and nobody will answer. It's not so much that we won't answer the questions, it may be that some of the people will not like the answers. And that's a difference. That's a big difference. Yes, sir. Well, we're not against the Earl Scruggs Center. I'm not personally, I don't know about anybody else. Yes, but why the courthouse? Why not move to get another facility? Well, I think the courthouse basically was, it was sitting there, it was a building. No, 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 there's a the building. Oh, I know, I understand that. I, I, and, I, and I agree, I, I understand your opinion, I respect your opinion. I have to have any answer for that. Part of it, along with your decision, was the museum that we reacted to that part of it. And like Mary said, we've talked about this thing for a couple of years. And I told him at the last meeting, I endorse the concept. The concept is that we can put for you, them, or somebody in the building that's got four million dollars, that's equal to about eight to twelve cents per hundred tax base that we don't have to get. That's what I endorse. I endorse that project to save the taxpayers money. That's it, it regards what your old scrub, your name, your name, and whose name it is. We have not had any conversation with Earl Scrub, or Earl Scrub family, or any of them. Our conversation has been with Destination Cleveland County. Our county. And like I say, their concept, and Brandon and I talked about it, the concept is good. Even if we went back to a museum, the concept would be with a museum, can they afford the building, can they keep the building up, or is it another burden that the taxpayers have to take on later on? That, that's one of my concerns. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to say is, I think that the fact that Brendan had an idea for a, fa a festival, uh -huh. 
and the fact that Destination Cleveland County has an idea for a museum, mm -hmm. that should prove that we're not totally against Earl Street. Oh, I know. That, that, those are two, <coughs> okay, they're two totally different ideas. We want that center. Mm -hmm. I, I, we honestly think it would be a good idea, too. We, we embrace their concept, their vision. However, they're saying that we don't have a vision. We've been called a lynch mob. We, I mean, it, you know, these, these people are, 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 are <laughs> we have no imagination. We have opinions. We're Cleveland County citizens with opinions, and we've not been allowed to give our opinions. I think there's well, some, and, and what you said, there should be a compromise. But you can't have a compromise, you can't have a debate unless you have two sides. We, we've not, we have not been allowed our side. You have to have two sides to every story to, in order to have a compromise. Ms. Acker? Yes. Uh, why? I, I, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, and I asked Eddie Holbrook last week. Uh, uh, <coughs> Why was DCC not told to be quiet about that it's going to be done? You, you, in other words, they have advertised that it's going to be done, which makes you look like you've done a backdoor deal. Yes. Now, yes. did you say anything to DCC about why are you speaking for what I haven't done? Has, has any of you commissioners done that? Now, what, is, what exactly are they speaking for what we haven't done? I mean, in other words, if they say it's a done deal, they're saying that that it's going to be. Has, it, has anybody failed to catch that point? We no. can't. Let, let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, wait, wait, let me finish the question. Let me. 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 Let me.
uh, check out the library. It's got the history, the history uh, inventory by Brian Higgs. In here, all the inventory. Let him finish his question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get that. And we got great, we got great business, Mary. That building up there is going to be called a different uh, organization, association. Uh, the county commissioners is committed to 1.5 million dollars, one and a half million dollars. I mean, you know, we can get grants. We can also do all these things. Yeah, and then the public is still going to the public. We don't need a private entity. Uh, mm -hmm. that you're taking the 15 minutes to leave out of the meeting. It's like that I asked you last time. Uh, why did you, uh, I mean, I don't, it's hard to pose the question, but when someone is saying that it's a done deal, uh -huh. Did you have ever have words with DCC that wouldn't say it? It's a done deal that this is going to happen. No, uh, actually, Liam, we we get that a lot. We, regardless of what we go out to try, yep. whatever type of of, of uh, business we may try to come in, may try to come in or whatever, they always go out there and say what they want to say. But they don't. They don't. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute, brother. I'm, I'm at it. There are some things that you cannot control. That's one of them. You can't control these things? Well, that's the great now. The thing about the end it's always going to be like this because, you know, I hear you say that you want to, 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 to meet and you want to be in, in cohesiveness, but as long as the driving force is to get you to agree with the driving force. You see, they're always going to want you to agree with what she wants you to agree with. That's the bottom line because she's the leader of the group. But, and then the other group is always going to get them to agree with them. So it's always like that. You're always going to have people to, to want this, and you're always going to have people to want that. Bottom line, put it to a vote. Put it to a vote. I'm sure. I'm sure yes. that if this were some unsavory group, uh -huh. and they came out and they were assuming and passing out all this information mm -hmm. that is assumed, y'all would step up and say, "No, sir, we're not part of it." You know, so, one of them the they probably assume a lot of it. One reason is, and, and I mentioned last week, over all the meetings we've had, just a couple of them is the only ones ever showed up. That's right. Just a couple. I told you, you know, that. And you're not the ones that ever come to the Commission. Why don't you bring this to the I have told you to get that stuff. See, if you had to have that road when you see that Cat Porter has been trying to say that. Yes, yes, Cat. Okay. Okay, uh, I just want to say that I do not feel like I am at a meeting of sabotage when I want to tell you that I graduated from high school in Shelby High School in 1942. We, as history classes, walked to the courthouse to hear court in session. Later, after I was out of high school, I was a member of the Little Theater. We performed a play there entitled The Night of January 16th, which was the setting was a courtroom. We played to a full house for three nights. <coughs> and that is history. That has that is not sabotage. And that is a dear building and the young people are not gonna know that if we give it to her. Well, let me let me say that way I'm I'm getting tacked on my and uh, 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 <laughs> Because of the comments you made about sabotage. Right? But anyway, let me just say that the, the part of the misinformation is that the courthouse, through that, that theater room, will be the same according to the plan. And there will still be able to be a, a performance. So I think that people are getting upset because they're not informed about the, the plan. And now I'm getting upset. Let me say that it will be the same. But however, you have a corporation that has leased this building that you have to go through in order to do anything. Am I right when I say we do not want to lease this building to a corporation? You're right. Am I right. Right. I told you 
is that these people were out there. So I've heard this all the time. Yes. No, they didn't come to the commissioners <coughs> meeting with me. And, and But now I heard it, I heard it, and I'm still hearing it everywhere I go. And I do want to add one thing. Mary said when I came to see her last June that I was talking about another venue for Earl Scrubs. Let me back up. This started in March. I'll say this very quickly. Hoyt Bailey and I were taking a look at the Merle Fair. And we thought we could do this here in Cleveland County. It brings in more than $15 million to the economy in Wilkes County. And we thought that maybe since we have Earl Scrubs, we could call it the Earl Fair. I got Doc Watson to call Earl. Earl was uh, all the to do it and so forth. But anyway, this was shot down by Brown and Plaster and DCC. Now, uh, Eddie and uh, Hoyt took Mount Marta and Brownie to lunch and Brownie threw a fit because she didn't want anybody else doing anything with Earl. She didn't want anybody else doing music here in Cleveland County. She said, I think that Shara Miller, I said, do you, do you think this is conflict of interest with you? She said, I think Shara Miller would say it's a conflict of interest with our sound. Now that was in April. So if I was recounting this to Mary in June, I mean, it, that died in April. And Hoyt's birthday party, which was uh, on Saturday night, I believe it was the 17th of April, is his birthday, so it was maybe like the 20th that weekend. And that was the end of that. So if I was telling her this in June, then I was telling her it's past history. So this is what happened to that. This would be a good idea for Cleveland County. But mm -hmm. they didn't think of the idea. They didn't want to do it. Earl didn't want to do it unless it was done through JT, because he was already working with JT. They said they didn't want to do it. Now that's the end of that. Let, 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 me have, let me have just one more minute before we got to go. And I, I'm going to come to the defense of David Deer. David Deer is credential for this county. I've worked with David Steer for the last two years on 2020 projects. If it doesn't benefit Cleveland County, David Deer will not step out for it. One of the reasons David Deer was asked to serve on that committee was look out for your best interest, my best interest, and come back and report to the commissioner. But David Deer is one of the hardest workers we have in bringing economic development to this county. This guy can go anywhere he wants to and be hired in making more money than what he's making right now. And just doing economic development. So don't I don't think yeah. that we were attacking David Deere personally or anybody else that was on this list. But does anybody here have a problem with your county commissioner, I mean your 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 uh, county manager who is paid for by county funds, serving on DCC board of directors? Does that appear to be a conflict of interest? Yeah, yeah, he was looking out for the taxpayers, he could have come forth for everybody. That's what it is. And you have that for our benefit. Yeah. Yes, they do have voting rights. Let me ask y'all a question. Okay, Brian. If DCC is not accountable to anybody, you can't fire them, you can't dismiss them, you can't vote them out of office. Uh, if there's some, is there some way that the county commissioners and the city council, maybe jointly or what, either one end or the other, will be head over uh, destination Cleveland County? Because we're giving them our buildings, we're giving them our money, and they don't have no accountability to anybody. Oh, no, I don't think that's the truth. I think that the lease is going to spell that out. Is the accountability would come within the lease? We, we, we make public. They, yeah, yeah okay. public documents. Am I hearing you right? I'm not right. hearing you right. right. telling us that you all are going to accept their proposal. No, excuse me. Am I hearing you right? When, when, because before we spend any money or time doing anything else, it only takes three of you. Am I hearing you right? When you are, are telling us that you're going to vote, that the only thing left is this. <coughs> Brendan, Brendan, you're not hearing me say anything. Okay. So, so this deal, I'm not hearing you, you all right, there's three of you in here. I mean, I know you want to put that into my mouth, but you, you're not hearing me okay. say anything. Okay. Because, number one, I represent the people. And so for me to say something here, that would be, be unfair for the other side. Okay. I represent the people. I will speak in the chamber. Okay. But, now, on the video, when you, when you endorse this on the video, huh? you endorse this on the video, that you're, you are endorsing the concept. I'm well, on the video, I believe what I said was the <coughs> Cleveland County Courthouse will always be the Cleveland County Courthouse. And, and I wanted to make that point yeah. because I was hearing so much 
about it was not going to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. How do you think that? Huh? How do you think that? I still haven't got from point A to point B. Because the reason why I figured that, Brendan, is because I believe in a big puzzle, a big puzzle. And when one piece falls apart, all the other pieces fall together. And that's what and to me, this courthouse is a big post. Okay. And Earl Scruggs Center is just one piece of that post. I have heard also the virtual, and this is another thing, the virtual museum for children. You're talking about children not being able, you know how high gas is for those buses to come, uh, to, to gas those buses up to bring kids to a location? Well, those kids won't even have to get on their bus. That virtual museum can come up on a computer and those kids can enjoy it all day long, every day. And they can pull up everything that they want. How many other chances will they have to do that? But, but they don't have to do it in the corner, though. They can do that anywhere. Excuse me, I know they don't have to do it in the corner. But if they have to do that, the library. Right. We got to 10 to 7. We got a few more minutes. 10 to 7. Okay. And, 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 and anybody else that didn't get to speak have anything to say on the table? Yeah. Uh, but what I'm hearing, what Mary said, and the question that Liam brought up, a lot of information that they printed in their brochure is not fact. A lot of the information that they printed in their brochure, all of it is fraudulent. And it's this right here tells me that we got three. They haven't given them the museum. Right. They don't have any rights to it. Right. We, this thing, this strategic planning task force, says that we've got three county commissioners, commissioners seated on that group, on that board. What? If that be the case, and they choose to stay on this task force, then when it comes to a vote, I think they should abstain. This was yeah. one meeting. I've only attended one well, meeting. Why is it called a task force? Did you call one meeting? Evidently, that's the word to hear. That's, that's the word to hear. That's the word to hear. So when we like went to the meeting, that was the only meeting. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a working group. Then, you, you know, you all had That sounds like sabotage. You're running again this spring. For your own purpose relations, you might all take this up with Brownie and DC. Well, it's a bit of a problem. Wait a minute. I take offense to that, Brandon. This has absolutely nothing to do with my election, and I'm not in here to count. I didn't need it from there. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. But if I had to say the public again, I'd be concerned. Okay, I just wanted you to make sure that you understood that this has nothing to do with the election. I would like to know how you were going to protect the interest of the community. How would you, as a candidate for county commissioner, protect the interest of the Cleveland County taxpayers in this DCC County Courthouse police so I'm holding them accountable. That's how I protect the system. Yeah. You can't hold them accountable. But they're not, they're not held accountable now. How are you going to hold them accountable then? Well, they're not even in a, in a, in a situation now. Yeah, okay. How do you hold How is the like you say, I got an answer. I will bring it. You got a call. I know Earl Scrub from many years ago, and uh, but I don't know him. I just know him at sight. And I don't know of anything that he has done for Cleveland County. But Homer Hayworth, Gene Ellis, and Ray Ledford have brought the music out into this community. Uh, under uh, under Hayward, uh, Hayward, I had three children that had the masters in music. I, none of them have it from him, and I hope they don't get one. How many of you marched in home with Hayward fans? <laughs> Let's just see a raise of hands. I'll bet you this. Look at this. <laughs> Thank you.
County Courthouse. And Sunday afternoon, we're going to meet at the Cleveland County Courthouse at 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon to, to rally around the courthouse. Tell everybody, tell your friends and neighbors, that we want to run this ad tomorrow. And if anybody wants to get drunk and going for this ad. Yeah, okay. And, and we have a packet here. Um, where is that, Billy? We have a packet of um, a flyer. If somebody would take 